thank you for hearts being changed and hearts that have been changed through you. Thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for moving in and through us today. Thank you for music. Thank you for gentle proddings, for your leading. Thank you for those that are sitting here today, hearing your word in maybe a different way than what they're used to hearing about you. Let's praise you, Lord, and give you the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. What about some of your family members here this morning, hey? We have... Superheroes, uh, Wonder Woman number two. <laughs> At least the tag on this said I was, can you see? Yep, I'm Wonder Woman. It says, I'm Wonder Woman. Powerful face stories, huh? From somebody who's grown up in a Christian home and has always known Jesus in his life to a high schooler who has gone through more than many of us have experienced in her short life. And for her to be willing to not only get up and share her heart, but then to sing a song that just penetrated my heart. I don't know about you, but um, took everything I had to get up here without bawling and crumbling. <laughs> This month is Evangelism Month, and evangelism is, just seems like such a scary word, but all it is is being a friend and doing what the four did this morning, sharing their story, telling one another who Jesus is and what he's done in our lives, and none of us has attained that amazing goal of being Jesus, being the superhero that he is. Um, when I first met Mark, I thought he was my superhero. And not that he isn't still my hero, but through his wisdom, he kept directing me to go to God's word. And um, he couldn't save me. He couldn't make everything better in my life. He could walk alongside me. But the only one that could save me was Jesus. The scripture, when I was reading the Second Corinthians, I'm like, oh, I asked them to, to print that in the bulletin. And I remembered why, and I think it was from the, um, the words from the biblical version that I looked at when it um, said in there that he has delivered us from destruction. And in the Bible that I had used, the word was avenged. And I thought superhero Sunday avenge was a a good word to use. And Steve, you said it so eloquently that it was his grace. Dennis, you talked about God's grace and his free gift. And Cindy, you talked about the perils and that whirlwind. Think about superheroes in our whirlwinds of they usually come in when what? When everything's going great? When we're amidst turmoil and things are happening in the lives and the comic books and movies and they come in and swoop in um, to avenge, to fix, to support, to help, to be the saviors. And in the children's sermon, it was so eloquently stated, too, that our only superhero that we have is who? Jesus. Who? Jesus. Thank you. Yes, our only superhero is Jesus. Um, and I was thinking about um, 
what to sh- I didn't know what these guys were going to share. So then I didn't know, okay, Lord, what, what, how, how is this all going to come together? But the reality is I'm not a superhero. And through God's word, through his faithfulness, through his grace, through the gift of the Holy Spirit, I'm Tanya. And I don't know about you, but I think about my character, the gifts that he's given. What gifts has God given you? Do you know what your weaknesses are? I can tell you my weaknesses probably faster than I could tell you what my gifts are. But God's given me gifts. And it's through him that he's building and growing and avenging and through his grace. My verse when I um, gave my life to Jesus and I I still claim on to it, he who began a good work in me will complete it the day of Christ Jesus. That is his promise that he is working in me daily, that I can continue to be Tanya Sorensen and not be afraid. I can continue to be the woman that he wants me to be, the mom that he wants me to be. I don't have to wear a costume on Sunday morning. I don't have to wear a mask, which many of us come to church and don't we put on our best faces, our best attire, so that nobody really sees who we are? And as Steve also said, this is family. And family, when you think about your family, there's good, bad, and the ugly. I don't know about your family, but that's how my family was growing up. And we've tried to make a better difference. Um, I hope we have um, made a more godly impact on our children's lives and our grandchildren's lives. But it is all because of Jesus. All because of And who read the verse, for God so loved the world? Who did that? Where are you? You did so wonderful when you read that verse to us. That he died on the cross, and he's no longer there. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive in us. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Yes. This month, we've gone from how to love. Remember Mary and Martha? And how do we earnestly love one another, not just within these walls, but going out? And then last week was about the prodigal son, but not focusing on the the son who left, but the brother who who stayed behind. And the judgment and the anger that he held on to. And then the reality that he kept saying, why are you doing all this for this younger brother? I'm here. I'm the faithful one. And finally, he got it. The father had everything that he needed always right there, but he didn't ask. Have you asked our heavenly father to be a part of your daily life? Is he? And if he is, hallelujah. And if he isn't, he wants to be. He wants to be. Next week is Bring a Friend Sunday. Do you all have friends? Of course you do. You're amazing people. You all have friends. Well, in your bulletin, Jen was so kind to put in, let's see if I can find mine. Where'd it go? You should have a little invite. Did mine fall out? Do you have? Thank you. You're invited to bring a friend Sunday next week. Miss Olivia, last week we were talking about this, and she said, I already know who I'm going to invite. I wish I was like her. Because I'm still thinking, who am I going to invite? I am out on an acreage taking care of grandbabies, trying to get things going, and I'm not out amongst people as much, but we're going to be inviting. We are going to think about who we can invite If it was Christmas morning and you got one of the most amazing gifts that you could have ever dreamed of, 
would you just sit on it, or are you, can you hardly wait to go and show your best friend, your relative, can hardly wait for school to come in again so that you can show your friends what you got, right? You get so excited. Jesus is more than that. Don't you want to share him with your friends to bring him here? Have you had a good time this morning? Has it been fun? Is it a celebration? It's been worship. It's been glorifying, I believe, glorifying to God. Um, and all it is, guys, is what Steve and Dennis and Cindy and Ashley were willing to do. It's just share your story. This is why I'm inviting you. This is what Jesus has done in my life. I want you to come and see. Are you willing? Are you willing? Yes. Let's pray again. Lord, thank you for the opportunity to share more about you. Thank you for the, um, the people that you're going to bring to mind for us to invite for next week, that we can come together, celebrate, worship together. Um, the first in the Sunday school classroom, so much joy and fellowship afterwards, Lord. We just give you the glory and honor ahead of time for what you have in store for us, not only for the rest of this day and through the week, for, but for next Sunday also. Bless those that are here, Lord Jesus. Give them the courage to step out of their comfort zone, Lord. Trust in you, trust in the Holy Spirit to move through us as we're asking and talking to people and listening, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.